You don't have to be an expert in production or work in production in publishing to understand different book specifications. You've probably come across a lot more than you actually realise if you own at least one book. So today I'm just going to be running through them because I encounter a lot of these in my role when I work in production in publishing. So the first thing I would say is the trim page size. So that's called the TPS for short. This is essentially just the length times the width of the book. It's how big your book is, but we do this in measurements. So for example, in the UK, we tend to use millimetres and in the US, we tend to use inches. For example, our 234 by 156 millimetres. And then you have a page extent, which is kind of key to a book because obviously the more pages there are in a book, the bigger and the thicker the book is going to be. The extent I've mentioned in one of my other videos as well on parts of the book is the total number of pages that a book has. So not the little numbers that you see at the bottom that you think is like the proper page number. And extent includes all of the front matter, all of the back matter. So if it's got contents, acknowledgements, anything like that, it's the exact number of pages from start to finish. And then like linking onto that, another thing that is classed as a book specification is the spine width of a book. So if you can imagine a book that has more pages is obviously going to be thicker. And if you look at the spine on the side of it, therefore, it's going to be be wider and so in production we deal a lot with that with changing the specs different printers might use different paper and therefore they'll be thicker and then a bigger spine width then probably the most obvious book specification that you've come across is the format sometimes that's called different things but I say format and that's essentially if your book is hardback or paperback you probably already know the difference between them but I'm gonna run through some examples of books that I've got and then show you as we go along so specifically for hardback books you could have a cloth jacket and I'm gonna show you an example of that now so this book I was kindly gifted by a head of Zeus which Bloomsbury have actually just acquired now which is insane. This is Dublin's Girl. This has a cloth jacket. It's a hardback so obviously you can't see this in person but it is hard. And then inside it's got a jacket. I don't know if that's going to be clear enough. It's basically an extra piece of paper that comes out like that and it sort of hugs the book itself. To show you another example, Stacey Solomon's Happily Imperfect. This has got a cloth jacket as well. If we open it up you can see it's got these flaps here and then you could actually just completely take the cloth jacket off. There you go. It's external. That's just a bit of plastic, a bit of paper basically called the cloth jacket and then you're left with the actual book. I don't know about you but sometimes I like to take them off and I like to see what the actual book looks like underneath. So this one for example is just this kind of like green teal colour and then it's got the title along there. Humankind which is published by Bloomsbury. This also has a cloth jacket. Again, same idea. That's what a cloth jacket is. I'm going to show a hardback book but this, does, this next book specification doesn't have to be hardback. It can be paperbacks as well. The next one we're talking about is plate sections or plates. Um, sometimes they're called like inserts, tippins I think they are called sometimes as well. Essentially it's photos, it's images that are separate to the rest of the book. So easiest way to explain this is to show an example. I was kindly gifted this book as well which is called The Longest Farewell and it's by Seren or Seren, Seren Books. This is hardback, it doesn't have a cloth jacket. I'm going to get up close now. Paper used for this book is kind of like a standard creamy colour but then if you go to the middle you have plate sections. So it's just a few pages of coloured pictures. This is actually on different paper. So the rest of the book is kind of like this uh, rough texture, if you like, whereas the photos are printed on this glossier paper. And what happens with plate sections is they are printed separately to the book and then inserted afterwards. They're typically on higher quality paper because you're dealing with images and you're dealing with colour, so you want it to be higher quality. The reason why you might think, you know, why don't we just put the whole book in that kind of glossy paper? Well, that's obviously more expensive. So if you can, just sort of put all the images together and you might put them in the middle of the book, at the back of the book, but in a couple of places, whatever, um, I would say usually uh, what I've come across, it's usually just been dead in the middle, but that's what plate sections are. This is the only example I've actually got owning a book with plate sections in it, but I do deal with it at work quite a lot as well. So that's what plate sections are. Now you saw with our cover jackets, we have those sort of flaps in the beginning of the book. I just wanted to show an idea of like a paper flap. So this book is super cute. It's called The Little Book of Gratitude and it is a paper book, paperback. So it's like bendy, it's not hard at all, it's soft. And then inside you have flaps. Different to the cloth jacket, that's external, you can take it off. These are glued in. I can show that clearly. That is glued in, there's no way those flaps are coming off. They're just put at the beginning and at the end of a book to tell you maybe more about the book and at the back more about the author. So that's what flaps are. Moving on, we have ribbon. You might know this as bookmarks or whatever, but we have this book called Calm by the company called Calm. And if you notice on the side here, we have this ribbon. It's attached to the book. It's sort of in the spine there, if that's gonna load. Sort of in the spine there, it's attached. That is just to mark your page as far as I'm aware. That is so you can get the ribbon, 
you can put it on the page that you're on, close the book, and that ribbon will stay there, sticking out at the bottom so you can quickly open up what page you were on. So that is what a ribbon is. Next up we have sprayed edges, which is arguably my favourite type of book specification. So this is a proof that I've got of uh, Bloomsbury Raven Books Greenwich Park. So it looks like this, this is the spine, this is the back, and then this is the paper. So, sprayed edges, the edges are literally sprayed. That's not already clear, the paper there is green. The paper inside is not green. The paper inside is normal, and then the edges are sprayed. So that's what you have there. And I just think it looks so pretty. And I've seen different types of it as well, it doesn't just have to be one colour like that. I've seen different designs and stuff, but obviously all these things cost more money. But yes, that's what sprayed edges are. Going back to our hardbacks, I'm coming back to this book that's Dublin's Girl, and I've just taken off the cloth jacket, which we discussed earlier. And now we are left with the plain hardback. So this is a creamy coloured hardback and then on the side you have the title in blue with the author's name there now if i turn this in different directions you should be able to see the light shining on all of the blue what that's called is foiling so it's literally a foil that the printers use to create that effect there. For a camera, it's quite tricky, but they will shine in different lights there. Surprisingly, there are actually a lot of books that have this. And again, it can be on paperback as well. It's not strictly back, um, hardback. This is just the examples that I have. It's just a really neat detail and it will shine in different lights as well. If I just show the Stacey Solomon one as well, this is what it looks like without the cloth jacket. So it's just another type of book specification just to make the book a little bit different, a little bit more interesting. Next up, we have what's called Spot UV. And I think this is really effective when it's used in the right way. For example, I have this proof from Bloomsbury called Animal. It's Lisa Tadeo's first debut novel. And if I shine this in different lights, you should be able to see that that eye has a certain texture to it, if you like. If I do a close up there, you should be able to see that when I twist it, only the eye sort of has that light going across it. What that's called is Spot UV and you can feel it as well. So the book here is quite soft. Then if you go over to the eye, it's like that glossier kind of texture. It's almost like photo paper. So that's what Spot UV is. It can just be put in different places. It might be on the name of the book. It might be on pictures like that. I've got another example here. So the Calm book by the company Calm. That circle is in Spot UV because you should be able to see that that's having a little bit of light to it when I move it at different angles. Next up in our book specifications, we have head and tail bands. This is something that's on the top and the bottom of the book. I've got this book here, Women Don't Are You Pretty by Florence given which I'm yet to read but I've heard many good things about it. If we get close you should be able to see that when I look down sort of like an eagle view here connecting the pages there is a yellow colour and it's also on the bottom there. Pages are probably held together by glue but what those head and tail bands are are just like extra bit of material basically to give it a different colour. I've got another example here on the book Humankind and because the theme for this book if you like is orange you've got the orange umbrella the title in orange the spine in orange if you look there the head and tail bands are also orange there. Again, that is on the top and the bottom, hence the name head and tail. Back again with this book, Women Don't Are You Pretty, we're talking about end papers, and they are papers at the end of the book, literally self-explanatory. So if we open it up, the very first thing that you see is actually this animal print there, and then you get into the bulk of the book. The back as well the same thing there and those papers are pasted down onto that hardback board there and then there's the extra one there because obviously it's a folded sheet of paper there there and then you have your your main text there to show another example we have stacy solomon again and in her book her end papers have got photos on them so it's photos of her there so you see it's literally just that first page there if you have a look at some of your books some of them probably have it potentially just a plain color we go back to this little book of gratitude this has got end papers if you open it up you've got these blue paper so the rest of the book is in white paper but then the last two pages here are in blue so they don't have to be fancy like that animal print or photos or anything it can just be a different color okay next we're talking about debossing and embossing what that is is imagine parts of the book usually the text that is lower than the main cover or higher than the main cover i'm not smart enough to think of a better way to explain it than that but if i show you an example the easiest way to do this is grab a book and just feel the actual cover this one women don't know you pretty or if you you have this book as well the rest of the book is one flat surface and then if you feel over the actual title those red letters there they're actually slightly lower than the rest of the book if that makes sense so they're dipped in 
it's ever so slightly, sometimes you won't even notice it, you might have to feel it a couple times to understand what I mean, but that's what debossing is. So you're almost, imagine you're getting those letters and you're pushing them down, so they're kind of debossed. Then the opposite to that, of course, is embossing, so it's where the selected text or images will be higher than the rest of the cover. It can happen on the spine as well. So on the raw book of Stacey Solomons, we've talked about the gold foiling that we've got there, but if I run my fingers along there, I can feel that Stacey's name is slightly higher than the rest of the book. Sometimes you might do that for just to make it look pretty. Sometimes you might do it if the author's name is particularly big and you want it to stand out a bit more. Again, some of these things are not that obvious. You might have to look at a couple of examples of books that you've got and then once you notice it, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> then I want to talk briefly about paper types as well because this is definitely a specification that we use in production a lot when we're talking about paper. The best example I can provide is back to this book again, The Longest Farewell. I talked about how the rest of the book is on this whiter, more grittier paper and then the plate sections which are the images in the middle that's on a glossier kind of paper that's smoother to touch. That glossier paper is typically more expensive because you're using coloured ink on it. Books usually are just on that cream or white coloured paper. So we usually measure paper in grams per square metre. Just to note as well that paper might be FSC approved, which I'm now not going to remember what that stands for, but it basically means that the paper that they're using for that book is sustainably sourced. So offset is typically thinner, whereas book wove is typically thicker. And then matte art, which is probably used for that book in the longest fair well is used for like plate sections, lots of colours, lots of imagery. Moving on to the binding of a book, so when you want to put all the pages together and make it a final product as one unit. You have different types of binding. You can have sewn, you can have unsewn, you can have notched. So you can also have a wire binding which self-explanatory uses wire and does those kind of C curved shapes there. I would say typically used for notebooks rather than reading books because then you can open it out a lot easier. You have perfect bind which is used for a lot lot of reading books I would say and it's where all the pages are glued together and then you have saddle stitch which is basically staples so this little sample I was given the face yoga journal by Watkins publishing it's very thin because it is a sample if I show that up close it's got staples holding all the pages together so you'll typically use staples for a book that isn't very big maybe um if you remember using those books at school as well they had staples down the side that's what saddle stitch binding is then moving back to the actual pages so inside obviously there will be images or there'll be text on a book so we have to think about the ink typically you just have two options but that is not limited so you have mono which is black and white which is a lot of your novels where it's just white paper black text all throughout or one times one because you're using one colour from the printer or you'll have full colour or four times four and that's books like this like calm where you have colour all the way throughout Obviously that's gonna be much more expensive because you're using more ink than just black and white. Finally, I want to talk about the different laminations. So when you finally got your book, it's all sewn together and then you're thinking about the, the top cover again. If you look at this notebook here, you can see it's glossy. It means the light shining on it a lot. It's kind of that softer touch. Then if we go back to Women Don't Know You Pretty, that's matte. So if I shine that in the light, it shouldn't really reflect any light. If I hold them up for comparison. If I hold these books up for comparison, moving them at the same time, you can see that pink notebook is reflecting a lot more light. So that's the difference between gloss and matte lamination. So there are a lot of different book specifications and this isn't even an exhaustive list. So what affects the decision to use some of these? The most obvious one and the one that obviously we care about a lot as publishers is the cost. Everything additional, every specification, every extra is going to cost money. Whether it's a ribbon, whether it's head and tail bands, it's extra resources, it's extra time, that maybe a machine or a person has to put through that. Another factor is availability. If you want to print on a specific paper but that printer doesn't have it, then you're not going to be able to print on that paper. Same with different printers, might not print full colour, so you might have to go with a printer that does that, or you might have to consider going mono. Then the author might have a say in what their preference is, and then finally, but not exclusively, you have what the actual product is used for. If it's a cookbook, for example, you need it on that glossier paper, you need to print it full colour so you can see what the end product looks like, and yeah, on that kind of glossier paper in case you get any spillages. I hope you find that useful. Do let me know in the comments down below if you did find it useful. I'd love it if you were to go to your bookshelf now, see what books you've got, comment down below all the different specifications that you've learned that they have. Did you notice it before? Is it only now that you're realising it? Let me know. Thanks for watching and see you in my next one.